to Scott from Blue Fox Creative, and I thought I would discuss um, some domain name considerations when buying a domain name. Um, so there's either, there's typically there's either one of two situations that you're in, right? You either have a company name and you need to find that company name on the internet, or, or I should say you need to have that domain name because you already have a company name, or you're just now starting a business and you have that flexibility to kind of pick and choose any kind of name that you like. Um, the first situation is not, unfortunately, getting a .com. I mean, the end game here, folks, is to get a .com name. And the second goal is to, you know, make it so that it's easily memorable. And unfortunately, .coms are all taken up these days. I don't want to say completely taken up, but all the short domain names that are under six characters um, and a lot of the common names, general English names, have been bought up. Um, it wasn't that way 10 years ago, but now, I mean, it's just a cold hard fact that that's the case now. So if you have to have a .com, which is a good thing because everybody understands what a .com is, um, you're going to have to sort of do some magic there to get to find one, you know, by using dashes, which is not necessarily a good thing, or by possibly using misspellings, which is not necessarily a good thing. You're going to have to um, settle basically, unless you're willing to spend money, unless, that the, unless the domain name that you want is owned by a squatter. And in that case, you could just give them whatever they want. It's a bidding process, and you'll eventually get it. But that's another conversation for another time. If you're lucky enough to have the flexibility to pick one, then you're in good shape because there are many .coms out there to this day that you could that you choose from, and I'll discuss what to do in that respect. So again, what is a, what is a good domain name if it's under 10 characters? Um, if, if you can get the .com, that would be absolutely awesome. A .net is, would be my second choice. Um, it, the, the name is simple to, to remember. It doesn't necessarily have to be directly related to what you do as a business or what you want to do. Um, but if it's memorable, you win. Okay? And if you can avoid using dashes, uh, dashes aren't necessarily good for helping people remember. Okay, uh, what else? We got... Um, Okay, yeah, finding a name. So there are a lot of websites out there that will help you with finding words that, that will work. And um, after they find the word that you're looking for, they will tell you whether or not it's available as a .com or a .net, which is great. It saves a ton of time. Um, one, of those name, one of those companies is called CoolNameIdeas.com. That's CoolNameIdeas.com. Let me go back to the front page here real quick. So when you get to the front page... Click the business, you know, if you have a business, click the business button. And this is what's different than other name finding websites. They ask you some questions that are really, really great. First, they want to know what words would best describe your company. So let's pretend I have a pool company. I'll type in pool. I'll type in water, right? I, I consider my business, I, you know, when I stand out, I'll say that what I, as an example, I'm known for getting things done quickly. So I'll, I'll type in quick. Uh, I like crystal colored water. I, I don't know, I, we fight to make your water crystal, whatever. Crystal, type that in, and that's good for now. And then here's what's really neat. What type of business are you naming? And well, let's say group. It says, what benefit will your business bring up to the customer? These are not normally asked for name finding websites. So we'll select low price. What style of business are you naming? Easy, cool. So they're asking for like almost um, characteristics here. Masculine, passion. Let's do happy joy, right? And, I'm, and then it wants to make sure you're not a robot. Stop the automated robots from scraping their content. Hit generate domain or domains. And it's going to go out and begin checking their database and it will return suggested names. Now again, when it comes time to choosing a great domain name for your company, shoot for .com, but don't be overly concerned about the name directly re, uh, reflecting what you do, okay? You can use, you can have one word maybe that involves your company, but you don't have to, it doesn't have to be. Um, so here are names that, that it's found. Quick Crystal, I mean, that's kind of easy to remember, right? Up Pool, I like that one. That's a great one. Um, yeah, let's go with Up Pool. I'll click that. Let's see what it says. Up Pool. 
It says uppool.com is not available. Oh man, that stinks. Wow. All right, we we'll have to continue. Waterbee. Not available. Let's see real quick here. Hmm. Pool hive. <laughs> pool mojo. All right, pool mojo is available, but pool mojo is not available on Twitter. So that's also, uh, you know, it's kind of a consideration when choosing a domain name. These days, social media has become so uh, desirable that when you sign up with your social media, it's also awesome and great to have the domain name as the username for Twitter, or for your account name for Twitter and Facebook, right? That way all your ducks are in a row. Your Twitter account is Pool Mojo. Your Facebook account is Pool Mojo. Your domain name is Pool Mojo. Everything's Pool Mojo. Um, so it actually makes finding a good domain name a little bit more difficult because those accounts are taken already on social. In this case, Pool Mojo is not available on Twitter, so you know it takes. It's going to take a bit more time. But for this for, for this tutorial, we're going to stick with Pool Mojo. So that's business name generator. It's a really great site. I, I highly recommend it for finding names. Okay. Um, there's some other ones here. Domain Name Soup is a good one. They provide some tools and lead or lean domain search is also very good. Okay. The best registrars. Okay, so in my opinion, there's two registrars that are, that, that are the best. The number one, my favorite, all-time favorite registrar is called Namecheap. Uh, they're very popular. They've been around for a long time. They're definitely, uh, uh, they're definitely, they've made updates to the way their administration panel works. They are always upgrading it and making it simpler. They're concerned about usability. They are just a good, solid company. I've had them, I've been with them for... Uh, five to seven years. I can't really remember, but I've been with them for quite a long time. They're good. Uh, GoDaddy is also a good company. One of the benefits with GoDaddy is that if you want to transfer the domain, which means move the ownership of the domain to, to one GoDaddy account to another, it's very, very simple. Typically, doing a domain name transfer is, highly, is fairly complex. There's all kinds of steps, and sometimes you're not sure when, if you did the step right, and whether or not the thing is still in progress, and it's fairly complex, but when you're doing it with GoDaddy, it's easy from, a, from, from one GoDaddy account to another. Their admin panel is not, you know, it's not that great, but they're not bad as a registrar. I would go with Namecheap if it were, if it were my, my choice. So. And then finally, buying your domain name. So you have your domain name, you're ready to rock and roll, you're ready to buy it. You log into your, reg you set up an account with your registrar, and they ask you some questions. And one of the, one of the qu key questions is, what is your email address, okay? So they use your email, they're going to use your email address as the primary source for correspondence. If your domain name expires, right, and a couple years go by and it's ready, and your domain name's ready to expire, and that email that you provided is no longer in use, and they send you a warning and say, hey, it's about to expire, send us more money, and you don't get the, the message and you forget, right? And you forget to send them money. What happens is the domain name spot of squatters will come in and buy and buy the domain right out from underneath of you. Your website will go dead, right? It'll just die because ownership was was changed, and they switch it. They switch the how the where the domain name is pointing to. Your site goes down, and then you have to go to them to buy it back. Now they're not going to ask for ten dollars a month, which is the typical fee. They're going to ask for over a thousand or more. They're going to try to get as much money out of you as possible to get that domain name back. It's not exactly the most moral business in the world, but those guys are out there, and it happens all the time. And these guys are making so much money in this in, this, in doing this. Okay, so don't get yourself trapped in that situation. All right. So your email must be valid, 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 and it should be valid for a long time. I would recommend going out and getting a Google uh, email address and then forward it to whatever address you want. That's a, that's a good way of handling it. Also, the second thing is buy as much time as you can. Buy the total amount that they will allow you to buy. I believe Namecheap gives you up to five years, possibly ten. It's only you know, ten or eleven dollars a month to get a .com. Just spend fifty bucks and have it for five years, right? Why bother worrying about your domain name expiring every year? You know, don't don't get stuck into that possibility. Register it for a long time. Put the, the date. Be conscious of when the date, the expiration date is. Be, make sure you find it. 
Do a, do a search on Google for what is known as who is after you buy the domain, whois.com, and type in your domain name, and it will tell you the expiration date. Take that date and write it on your, your computer's calendar. It's going to be, if it's five years from now, it'll be 2021, right? Today's, it's 2016 now. That way, your computer will remind you, your email is valid, and you'll receive correspondence from your registrar. You won't, you'll be warned, and you'll, you'll have it on your calendar. It's almost a, it's a double, uh, double insurance there for you. Um, and then after, so after you've get, got that all squared away, the next step is to get your hosting, right? So you always have one company as your register, and you always have one company as your host. You don't have them as one. You always keep a degree of separation from the two, always. Um, so after you have your domain name all ready to go, you go out and buy your hosting, okay? And after you get your hosting, the hosting company will send you credentials for your account, your FTP credentials, how to get into the, the, the administration panel at the hosting company. And one of the things they'll send you is what's called the, the DNS addresses or the dynamic name server addresses. And that's what you use at the registrar to direct the domain name to the web host location, right? So when you type in uh, poolmojo.com, because you put those DNS addresses into the registrar account, all traffic goes from the, that .com right into the web host that you purchased. And that's when you see your website because your website files are, have been posted there. So I'm going to show you how to do that on Namecheap real quick. It's not difficult. Uh, let's go there now. So I've logged into my, my account here. Um, I'm going to go in and just show you. I'm not going to change it actually, but I'll just show you how to, where, where you do make that change. I'll go into scottfictorhere.com. It's always a good idea to have a domain name. That is your name, if you're lucky enough to get it. Click Manage. And Namecheap will provide you the admin panel, essentially, for that domain. And the, 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 the name servers are changed here, OK? So what you do is you, down, you click this down arrow, and it gives you some choices. If you want to modify the custom DNS, that's it, custom DNS, address that's not Namecheap's address. Hit that, and then you, you enter what your host sent you via email when you bought the hosting with them. And typically, there's two addresses. Sometimes there's more. If there's more, then you just hit, you enter the first two, then you hit the plus, and it gives you some more. And I believe you can just keep on going and going and going and going. I don't know why you would want more than three, but they provide you that capability. Uh, once you enter the names, then you hit the check, and it saves it. After it saves, the change does not occur right away. The, the change has to propagate over all the servers all over the planet Earth in order for it to work. Uh, it's gotten much faster than, than it used to be. I've seen it switch over in about two hours. You know, I've seen it happen in two hours. Usually, it, 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 it's, you know, the change occurs within four hours, typically. To be safe, I'll say that it happens within four to eight hours, okay? It used to be it took a day to two days, but now it's four to eight hours pretty fast and I'm sure in another 20 years it'll be almost instantaneous but for now it takes that long so don't expect the, the your domain name to automatically switch over to your website right away after doing this it's gonna take time um, and that's pretty much it I mean I, I you know really what's important is to make sure that you're aware of that expiration date I've been in situations where the client calls me up and they say hey my website's down I don't know what's wrong and I go in and I do a who is search to find out what their expiration date is. And here they changed their email with the registrar, so the registrar was warning them and they didn't get the warning message. And the domain not, got purchased right out from underneath of them. And they were out of luck. Either they, they came up with some, a large sum of money to pay ransom from the domain name squatter to get it back, or they had to just settle and uh, get a new domain name, which is a real pain in the butt because if you have you know, your, your calling cards and your, and your cover letters and everything, wherever it's printed on, could, would be enormously expensive. So don't get stuck in that situation, okay? Make sure that your email that you submit to your registrar is going to be valid for a very long time. This is Scott from Blue Fox Creative saying thanks for stopping by. I hope this helps you. If you like, um, like the video and if you want to subscribe, I put one out. I try to put a video out every day of something new about websites and about WordPress. So, um, yeah, sign up. All right, thanks very much. This is Scott from Blue Fox Creative saying goodbye.